Hello, everybody, and welcome to this short episode of The Story of Us, part of a new series that I've been doing where the episodes last about 10 minutes, and we discuss prudent topics, news, and things going on within anthropology. Today, we're going to be discussing something that came out recently in the last few weeks that's pretty big news when it comes to dating fossils that we know of and what it means on our trajectory to becoming human. So first off, I would like to introduce this skull. For any of you who do not know, this is a very famous fossil called Mrs. Plez. Now, it's actually funny because many researchers are starting to think that this is a male, but this species is Australopithecus africanus, and it is one of the first species that was discovered in South Africa, although not this species, I mean, not this individual in particular, that was the Tom child, but they're both the same species. Now, originally this specimen, which was found in the Sturkfontein Caves, which is in the cradle of humankind in South Africa, they were dated around 2.5, 2.6 million years ago, which is old, of course, but it's what we expect for something that belongs to the Australopithecine genus. It fits right around the same time we see other species, and it just made sense for the morphology that we see and for the everything that we knew about this species. But a few weeks ago, a paper was published that detailed a new dating method that was used. And this dating method ended up showing that these specimens, as well as others that were found in Sturkfontein caves as well, actually date to something much older. And that would be around 3.5 to 3.6 million years ago. Now, of course, that is a whole million years long older than what we thought. So what does that change? What does that mean? Well, it, it changes quite a few things. One, if we have a new dating method, which was developed by a Purdue researcher named Daryl Granger, we're able to redate the Brescia blocks, which the Brescia is the rock in which the fossils are found in. It's very common in South Africa. It's where most of the fossils come from. It's where Homo naledi has been found. It's where Australopithecus sediva has been found in. This type of rock, it's very sedimentary, but hardened and able to fossilize individual bones very well. So after redating these rocks using a new technique, which measures the cosmogenic nucleides in the rock, we were able to get new dates. So again, instead of 2.5 to 2.7 million years old, this famous fossil, Mrs. Plez, which we used to think was younger than the fossils found in East Africa, now dates to be around the same or much older. Now, of course, with new technology, it's essential to understand that there's gonna be a margin of error. This is new, it needs to be tested, it needs to be refined, it needs to be re-performed by other laboratories and other individuals to redefine this date and make sure that we actually know this date is more accurate. As we know from so many finds across the field, Redating often shows we were wrong in the past, and there's nothing bad about that. The thing about science is, as long as you're open to moving forward and growing with, with a new information, you are a good scientist. And the best thing that I've ever heard an anthropologist or really any scientist can just say is, I don't know. We don't know the answers. We don't know everything. So when we thought that this fossil was 2 million years old and now we hear it's three, 
Of course, that's big information, that's a shock, and it changes what we think about these fossils and their early development. But we really shouldn't be surprised that we have found something new. And the more new things that we find, the more questions that we have, the more questions that we generate, and the more answers we're able to search for. Because as we know, the journey is never ending. Professor Lee Berger likes to say, never stop exploring. And it's been such an inspirational quote for me that I've developed my own, which is there is always more to learn. And I believe both are equally true. The world is a vast place. We will never know all of its depths, crevices, and where things lie. But when we do find things, things from our past, things that illuminate where we came from, we can begin to glimpse why we're here, why we're human. Now, was Mrs. Pleas a human? No. No one, I believe, no researcher would consider an Australopith a human. However, they're on their way. And the fact that they were there at this point, 3.6 million years ago, utterly changes how we view the timeline of hominin evolution, pushing it back over a million years. Usually with radiometric dating, we're talking about a margin of error of a few hundred thousand years, give or take. But to now be adding a million year period that we didn't know about of this creature's evolution, it really makes us wonder and, and and causes us to ask so many more questions. And there's so many more answers to be had. And it's up to researchers that are out there today doing the work and the new generation that's coming in to find these answers. But don't forget, as soon as these answers are found, there will be more questions. And that's the beauty of science. If you're not interested in what's across the horizon, you're not gonna find it. So while of course, again, I would like to emphasize that these are new technologies. It's a new dating method that has not really been used in other places. So it's hard to gauge the accuracy, but from what we can tell by the tests that have been done, this method is quite accurate. And as we learn other things, such as a new tool complex known as the Lome Lomequian tools found at Lomequi, we are discovering that tool making could also have gone back a million years prior to what we believed. So who made these tools? It wasn't Homo habilis. Should his name be changed from the handyman? For he was not the first. They were not the first. What we know about paleoanthropology changes by the day. And for me, that's one of the most exciting things about it. So for these new finds in Serpentine, does it call into question every dating method that we've used? I think it does. Even with radiocarbon dating, as it's refined more and more, we're discovering Neanderthals live 50,000 years longer than we believe they did. That might be a little over exaggeration, but you get my point. We have more information. And as this information builds up, we're filling in gaps and understanding that we really don't know what the greater picture was, but we're finding it out. And it's thanks to the people that I interview on my show, researchers from across the world, from many different universities, fields of interests, demographics, what they're doing, the work that they're doing is so important because to me, one of the greatest questions in life that I think everyone should be interested in is where we come from. And if we understand where we come from, we can see that we have a shared human origins and so many problems that we face today would disappear. And this new find with Mrs. Plez and the other fossils at Serpentine 
once again push back the date a million years. What other creatures walked the earth so much longer ago than we believed? What creatures do we not even know of that existed? Mrs. Plez is a beautiful fossil. There's no denying that. She or he had a lot to teach us and continues to teach us. But there will always be more to learn. And I think that is where we will leave off today. I am hoping you enjoyed this video. We will do, I will be doing more of them. As topics arise, you'll also be able to listen to this on my podcast, on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe for $1.99 a month to get access to all of the episodes immediately. However, every episode becomes free one month after it has been published. So please go and subscribe. There's some special content that you don't see on YouTube. And I would love to hear what you have to say about that as well. Again, please subscribe, like, and never, never get bored. Keep learning. There's always more to learn. Have a great one.